All right, morning everybody. Welcome to class number two on the Small Catechism, Ten Commandments. Uh, we talked about the history of this, why it was generated, that Martin Luther had to create it because it was a woeful situation in congregations and in family life. They didn't know the basics of Christian faith, so he created the Small Catechism, the basics, the basics of Christian faith, designed for who to learn? Parents. Parents. Yes. Kids. Who's to teach it? Parents. Parents. Where is it supposed to be taught? Home. Home. There. If you get that, we're, on the, we're rock and rolling. But if there's a small catechism, there's also a large, large catechism, which you have all read, I would assume. Every word. Every word. Got that? I'm looking at the video. Got that? Video. Every word. Hopefully you will have to. Cool. Large catechism is for whom? The church. The church. And? Pastors and parents. Yes. The long version explanations of each one of these so you have a fuller understanding so that you can teach others. That's how it was designed. Where is it supposed to be used? In church. Sometimes in church, but primarily? Home. Home, Home again. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So we got two. So we got, it starts out in Lutheran theology with the Ten Commandments. Why the Ten Commandments? Because it's the law. We went through the history of where it comes from, the Exodus and that whole deal, Moses on the mountain, that thing. But it's law. What does law promise? Life. Life. You follow these and you'll have life, but what does it actually end up doing? Showing our sinful nature. Showing our sinful nature, because who can actually keep the law in its entirety? You mess up one, you might as well mess up all the other ones. Right? So it shows us our sin. It only pounds on us because it's law. We must keep these to have life. But when we look at them, the mirror says, we're not doing so well. Oh my gosh, what is God going to do about that? That's the rest of the story. But for now, it starts with law. Next part of the catechism? Gosh. The creed, which declares what? What God has done for us. What God has done for us. Absolutely. And though the last part of it is? The Lord's Prayer, which tells us how to, thank God. how to respond. Lutheran theology in a nutshell. Law, gospel, how then shall we live? Bing, 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 bing. Okay, throws in the sacraments too. By the way, which we're going to celebrate today at church, both baptism and Holy Communion. I mean, God is active today. It's going to be fun to watch. Can't wait. Oh, and special music that I just am so looking forward to. Oh, and a song from the 60s. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when it comes to the... Ten Commandments, what are the first three? No other God. God, okay. Honor the Sabbath. What? That's the third one. What's the second one? Mm -hmm. No false idols. Right. No false uh, no gods, uh, idols. Yeah. Shall know the gods? Think the name of the Lord God of Abraham. Sabbath. Yep. All three of those deal with whom? <coughs> God, God. God. Our relationship with God. <clears throat> why are they the first three? Most important. Why don't why are they not like seven, eight, nine, ten? Kind of. They're the most important. Now they're the most important, yes. What else do they do? They have another function in Luther theology. Hmm. Put God is first. Put God first, and everything else is going to be built upon <laughs> those. You gotta have those and an understanding of those to understand these correctly. Four through ten are they built upon? Ah. All right. With that kind of teaser, we're gonna get into them. Four through ten deals with our relationship with others. What's the fourth <coughs> commandment? Honor your father and mother. Honor your mother. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? You listen to what your father and mother says. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to what your father and mother say. And what else? You obey. You obey. <laughs> what does the small catechism actually say? What, is, what are the words? Kate, or someone? We should fear and love God. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What does it say? We should what? Fear and love God. See, it starts with, starts with one through three. We should fear and love God. It starts there. So that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities. Oh, 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 oh. Wait. This is on your father and mother. What? You just said what? Our parents, our parents and, and other authorities. And others in authority. Ooh, catch that. Don't let that one, <laughs> don't lose that one. Okay? Comma. But honor them, serve them, and obey them. Love and cherish them. There you go. Both in Luther, Luther loves doing that. Don't do this. 
but do this instead. It's a both and, right? But in this one, honor father and mother, listen to them, listen to them. Who else did he bundle in? Mother in authority. Now what in the world is he up to? Why would he put others in authority? They're not your parents. This is about honor your father and mother. That's what the scriptures say. Why does he throw others in authority in there? Render unto God what is God, and unto Caesar what is Caesar. Well, okay, that's cool. <laughs> so here it says, other authorities also serve God as God's representatives oh. for the support and protection of oh. our life on earth. Oh, 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 wait, wait, you're connecting some dots here. Yeah. Other authorities represent God. 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 So that means, so you say parents do too? Yes. Parents, whether they're good or they're bad, by however you want to determine that, are given to us by God as God's structure for this world. Other authorities are, are as well. And because of that, when you honor father and mother, when you listen to them, you don't despise them, you don't, you know, all those fun things that we can talk about, what, it, what in the, is the end result of that? In, in the end, we're not only honoring whom? We're honoring God. God. Remember, it starts here. We're to fear and love God. So, what are some other authorities that you might put on your list of? Well, back in the day, that was the king, because they were divine right. Well, there was the king, yeah. There was the divinity of that, yeah, absolutely. What, who else? Who else? Is Luther Caesar throwing? and uh, his soldiers. Caesar and soldiers? Okay, who else? Who else, who else is Luther throwing in the large catechism? The church leaders. Church leaders? Who else? There's, for those of you online, they're scratching their heads right now. <laughs> Who else? In the large catechism, who does he bundle into the others in authority? Priests. Priests, sure. You got the easy ones now. What about the other ones? <laughs> who are some other authority figures in general society? Teachers. Government. Government. Who else? Teachers. Teachers? Yes. Your boss? I mean, the long list of people in authority over you. Whoever that might be. That long list is included in the, in the commandment. Honor your father and mother and others in authority. By doing that, you honor God. Now, take a step back. Imagine for just a second, in our social media world, if we took that to heart and we honored others in authority, how would our social media posts look like when we have someone in the political world whom we, let's say, disagree with? There wouldn't be much social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Speaking for others, of course, you know, because y'all would never do that kind of thing, but... That's right. Wow. But that's how this is shaped. How do you respond to God by honoring others in authority, by honoring your parents? Because they are God's gift to you, believe it or not. So, can you have disagreements? Certainly. Can you can you not like somebody? Absolutely. Yeah. What are you supposed to do with that? To honor God. Still treat them with respect. Treat them with respect. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do you speak of them? Well. <laughs> well, even if you disagree, even if you don't like them, <coughs> even if everybody else around you is saying, let's talk, let's call it poor things about them. Yes, absolutely. Because in doing so, what do you do? You honor God. God. But what if, they're, what if your parents are, are brutal to you? Someone always asks that. Are you, are you stuck? I don't think God expects you to take abuse. Right. So you can, yeah. you can give them the honor that's due because they brought you into this world and they're your parents, but that doesn't mean you have to engage with them. And right. You do have to treat them with respect. Yep. Um, Even if you have to distance a little bit. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So that's how the balance is made there. Honor your father and mother and others in authority. And in doing so, you honor God. 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 Absolutely. So Luther would challenge all of us to say, how are we honoring God in those relationships every day? And if, there, if we're not, how can we make amends and live a different life? Questions about that one?
Haven't you told us that that's what the passing of the piece is really about? Yes. The passing of the piece is not, hey, how you doing? What are we doing for brunch? <laughs> that, we, we reserve that for the very beginning of the service where you can say all that stuff. The passing of the piece is honoring and giving peace to someone. Yep. But aren't there times when the government, like just for example, Nazi Germany, I yep. mean, obviously that was a very evil yep. regime. And, Absolutely. You know, like obviously that goes against God, so I think God would take precedence, obviously, over. Yes, and the passive resistance to that, and the resistance to that was upheld. But um, you still honor them by, um, you're not participating in the destruction and in the violence that maybe your government is doing to others. But don't you, have a, don't you have a responsibility to oppose that, though? Yep. Yeah. You know, certainly do, but how you do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I just went to the Holocaust Museum last Absolutely. weekend. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> just thinking about that. Yep. All right. Questions about that one? We're cruising because today's a big day. I guess that gets into like, don't do as others would have you do, do as God would have you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's the fifth one? You shall not murder. Murder, kill, yes. What's. All right. <coughs> what does that mean? Because we are to fear and love God. Oh, what, 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 we started where again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> We fear and love God, so that we don't endanger or harm the lives of other neighbors. Or, but don't any, endanger or harm the lives of other neighbors. Okay. Help lives of our neighbors. Our neighbors, okay. But instead, help and support them and all of. But instead, help and support them and everything they have. Yeah. Did you catch that? Don't do this. Do this instead. We're really flunking that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> As a country. Are, are you, are, is there a neutral position in that one, in living out that commandment? Can you just do nothing? Uh, no. No! Don't do this, do this instead. Where's the neutral position? There is none. Luther doesn't let us be there. The way we live our lives with our neighbors directly reflects our love and respect and faithfulness to God. Ooh. All right. Murder or kill. I'm waiting for someone to say, so that means we don't go to war. Go ahead. There. I always get the question, but I just put it out there. All right. With this commandment, is there anyone exempt from murdering and killing? No. Killing specifically, but. Well, there's conscientious objectors. Mm, in, this, in the commandment, in the large catechism, does Luther give anyone the exemption to this command? War? No. To conscientious objective. The answer is yes. Who is exempt from this command? Uh, I got the answer. Those who don't love God. No. <laughs> God. Yes, God. Because God first. And? There's one more. Jesus. <laughs> the church answered. Jesus. <laughs> Is self-defense? I don't know. <laughs> In the large catechism. Right? The fifth commandment. Neither God nor the government is included in this commandment. God has delegated God's authority of punishing evildoers to civil magistrates in place of parents. So, like, would that possibly mean, like, if you're a prisoner, if you're found guilty of a crime, and like with what we just saw on TV, where you are put, you know, your sentence is death mm -hmm. because you killed 25 people. Mm -hmm. Or the need, the, the awful necessity to go to war. Yeah. For Lutherans, it's the last resort. It's the process, the last resort process of trying to find another way. Mm -hmm. But for Luther, he, um, he writes a, a great treatise on can soldiers too be saved? 
Um, and he talks about the just war theory and how a soldier can serve and be Christian at the same time. It's a really great thing to read. I encourage all Lutherans to read that. But it's the civil authority's necessary role to defeat evil at times, but only as necessary. So it's not just, let's go fight because we want to fight, which some of the kings and princes wanted to do. They wanted to go out and parade their armies in front. That was kind of their sport, you know. They didn't participate in it. They had their armies participate in it. And then they go, you know, yeah, a sport. Luther would say, hmm. But if governments and God are exempt from the necessity to kill at times, who does this pertain to? Everyone else. Individuals. Yes. And what are we not what are we not supposed to do? Harm or injure. Harm or injure. Wait, wait. <coughs> That's a little bit less than killing, isn't it? Harm or but injure. Doesn't God in that in that, in this commandment say you are killing if you are harming? Others. What does it mean to harm someone? What are the, what are the, the breadth? Well, you can harm somebody more than in a physical way. Yes, mm -hmm. more than a physical way. Can physical for sure, but how else? Emotional way. Emotional way? What else? Verbally abuse, all the threatening. Threatening, yeah, what else? Neglect. Neglect, yeah, what else? Let's bring it back to social media. How do people harm one another using social media? Yeah, what they're calling. <laughs> words. <laughs> words. Right. You destroy someone's reputation? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All of that is bundled into this. That's under the you shall not kill, murder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because because a court, court of law, when, just, just a question, well, maybe uh, we don't have time. Oh, yeah. I, no, I, I just gotta make my, I gotta keep myself on track today because we got all tons of stuff. I got a family yeah. coming in and. I'll we'll ask later. Okay. If we're not, if we're not supposed to harm or injure our neighbor, that's included in killing, murdering. What are we supposed to be doing? Help. Help. Help and support. Help and support. Help and support who? Them. <laughs> our neighbor. Which neighbors? All, all of them. them. The ones you like or the ones you don't like? Both. Yes. Oh, oh. Both. Luther doesn't let us off the hook. Oh, does he? Does he? Does he rail against the Pope? Yes. Does he rail against um, the politi politicians? Yes. At the same time, somehow help them. Somehow speak well of them. Somehow, he's going to get to that in the next couple of commandments. But <coughs> murder and killing—it's as much about. The injury as it is about the death. And we're supposed to help our neighbor instead of no neutrality. Can't be indifferent. Help. Questions about that one? I got time for one more. Nope. <laughs> Six. What's the next one? Shall not commit adultery. Okay. What does that mean, according to the small catechism? Unless you're married, you can't, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just say. Okay. Make pure and decent lives in word and deed. Yep. Pure and decent lives. Pure and decent lives in word and deed, and? Love and honor of our spouse. Now, there's been a change in the wording of this over the past 10 years in the ELCA. Did you catch it? Yeah, this was. Mine says wife or husband. I'm yes, sure that's how it's yes. The original. But husband and wife shall love and respect each other. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because in Luther's time, marriage was between a husband and wife, male and female. And that was the structure of the world. Absolutely. The ELCA had to wrestle with that when they did their whole sexuality study thing. Right? If now the world defines husband and wife, married couples differently, then the language has to be expressed differently. Right? My question to you is, as we before we get into the meaning of this, what's the ELCA's position currently on marriage? Individual congregations have to make a decision. 
Individual congregations have to. And what do they require? What's the requirement? Is there a requirement? No. Can can husbands and wives, can male and female get married? Can female and female get married? Can male and male get married? Yeah. Is the ELCA required, is any ELCA congregation required to have that happen? No. Not, not currently. There's a possibility, but not a requirement. For those of you watching online, just want to clarify all that stuff. So a there's, congregation can decline to allow that? Not only congregation, but who else? Pastors. Pastors. Yeah. Clergy. Your rostered clergy are allowed to, as a matter of conscience, to say yes or no. Yeah, without penalty, currently. There's some confusion out there. That there's word that the ELCA, my, my mom's church in <laughs> Florida, has protesters out in front of it now over that issue. With the assumption that this church, because their ELCA, performs marriages for those who couldn't be classified as husband and wife. I know that a few years back, yep. when all that came out, yep. um, we, we had several same-sex marriages. Here. Yep. And they were members of our church. So yep. We were very open with that. So where does, why is adultery a big deal? It's faithfulness between two people. Faithfulness yeah. between two people. And where does the two people thing come from? In Luther's Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah, that's good. You're all the way back. We did that last week. All right. And who, who created that bond? God, God. God. So you're bringing it all the way back to God created something, a bond between two people, husband and wife, absolutely, that no one should put us under. Yeah, we, there's all sorts of things that happen, and divorce happens, all this stuff. But the reality is, <coughs> in Luther's view, that institution of marriage is a sacred institution. For the betterment of not only people involved, but society as a whole. Do you have to get married? No. No, 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 no. But what in the large catechism, what, what does he say to those who say, I'm not going to get married? Uh, Corinthians 7.25. Keep going. Uh, it says, it's good to keep yourself a virgin in, until such time you are married, and in doing so you are doing God's work. Yeah. But once you get married in Corinthians seven twenty five, it goes on to say that okay, well now you're married. So now the decisions that you make and the things you do by glorifying your spouse and lifting them up and making them good. Yep. You're bringing God glory. So now your goal once you're married is to bring your spouse your husband, your wife, the glory, yep. and in doing so, you're doing God's work. So, in God's world and understanding, what is marriage for? <laughs> Glorify God by honoring your spouse. Honoring your spouse and leading pure and decent lives. Yeah. Loving and honoring. Loving and honoring. Potentially producing children. You know, go be fruitful, multiply. All that's we woven into the story. Okay. Who does he take issue with? <laughs> the priests. The priests, because what were they? Oh. Sworn to celibacy, mm -hmm. right? Because of Corinthians, you know, serve God and be better if you weren't married. Paul says that, which, you know, it'd be better if you weren't. But what, are, what were priests doing <coughs> in his time? They were taking money. Oh, more than that. When it deals with adultery, they were probably having relationships. <laughs> um, they were, as Luther says, giving into their carnal nature. And he would say, if that is your case, if you cannot not give in, then you must get married. Because that is the proper place for that kind of activity. In fact, the ELCA still holds that position, by the way. How about today, where currently, and I'm sure it's happened for centuries, Priests have um, child, you know, molested <laughs> children. Well, there is some of happening too, but right. for, for, for adultery, right? I mean, is that adultery? 
And then is that Sounds there? I mean, is that there? That celibacy is there? Um, that would be their sinful nature mm -hmm. okay. in its fullest form. Okay. That's, yes. That's what I wanted. To yes. Adultery. That's a whole bunch. Outside of the bonds of marriage, who does it hurt? Everyone. 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 And who does it dishonor? God. 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 That's bottom line. So what are we supposed to do in the small track cousin? What's the what are we supposed to do? Husband and wife love and respect each other. Because in doing so, what does that do? Honors God. Honors God. Who sees it? Everyone. It makes a statement. By the way, it's my 36th wedding anniversary today. Oh, okay. happy anniversary. Congratulations. Oh, okay. yeah. How many yeah. years? So, 36. 36. Wow, wow. good for you. 7, 8, 9, 10 next week. And then we're getting into the creeds, which will be perfect because we're going to do three weeks on the creed during worship service. So we'll cover it then too. <coughs> All right. I'm going to encourage you, not encourage you, ask you, no, not ask you, go read the large catechism. <laughs> No, seriously, it's going to take a while. It took me a while to reread it again this week. It's a thick read, but read it through and get it, gain understanding. It really fills in some of the blanks. 